So you finished recording your song, EP, or album, and you're about to export stems for your mix engineer, but you're not sure how or what to export. If you're new to this channel, I'm Brendan Pajazic of The Band Structures, and this channel is geared towards metal production and recording. Today I'll go over how to export stems for your mix engineer, including how to label, organize, gain stage, MIDI, and other crucial information. I decided to make this video because the number one question I get when an artist or band messages me to mix their project is how do you want the stems? So without further ado, let's dive right in. Basically, the first thing that I like to do is I just make a new session. I save as whatever, chugs to four stems. That way I have my original one with all my original processing and I don't have to worry about like going back and fixing whatever I undo right here. I like to go in order. So usually I have my drums first and they're kind of like the first thing that I process. And the most important thing really is to make sure that all of your MIDI over here, all of your MIDI drums are consolidated. And then I like to go to the very beginning and just consolidate from there. And one big thing, sometimes like when I'm opening up a session for a mix, the drum MIDI or the MIDI in general is completely off from the rest of the track. And a lot of times this happens because there's no first note Say, see how my MIDI is starting at the very beginning of the session. There's nothing, but it's just there so that the MIDI track knows, okay, MIDI starts here. Just rename it and export it. Drum MIDI. I want all of the important mixing data in my folder name. First, I want band name, song name. So the song's in 48 kilohertz. So I want it to be 48 kilohertz, 32 bit. And then last of all, I want my tempo, if it's one tempo map the entire song, 115 BPM. That way, as the mixing engineer, I open up the folder. I have all of the information here. So when I'm making my Pro Tools mix session, 48 hertz right off the bat. One thing that is a bit annoying is when I get stems that are band name dash song name dash 44.1 dash drums dash kick. All I want to see is drums dash kick, drums dash snare. That way, when I'm trying to find a specific stem when I'm mixing, I don't have to see like five things before I see kick. A lot of people will make a folder for drums and guitars and so on. But with this method, you only have to make one folder and it's easier for you and the mix engineer. Go to zero DB. Next, I want to make sure that I have all of these plugins off. I want to send raw samples. Go through all of them. Doesn't matter what you got. Mute it. I want it dry. You don't need to send the parallels because I'm just going to create my own because I know what I like. So we got all of our drums highlighted. All the plugins are off. We'll export. The way that I do it in Ableton, I go Shift Control R. And then there's a nice little option in here where I can go Selected Tracks Only and it'll bounce all of them in order. Each DAW will be slightly different. So look up the specifics for exporting from your DAW of choice. So when you're exporting the stems, you want to make sure that they're all the length that they're supposed to be. Exporting each track from bar zero zero is the best way to make sure there's no room for error as there's no way that the audio will start earlier or later than it should. Important before exporting it, make sure that they're named correctly. So you got kick, snare, rack, floor, hi-hat. So I'm just going to skip over the snare, reverb, and the effect track. I'll do those when I do like the synths and the keyboards. Do that, drums dash blank. So a lot of times your amp tone will actually dictate the way that you play a riff, like certain things like harmonics and pinch harmonics and like chugs. So that's why it's important to provide the mix engineer with the DI guitars, as well as the general amp tones that you have. I'm just gonna duplicate these. Now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna name this one main DI left. And then I'm gonna name this one main DI right. The reason I started doing main DI left and main DI right instead of saying main DI L and main DI R is when I import them into Pro Tools, sometimes it'll group ones that are named L and R into a stereo track. And I noticed that if I name them left and right, although it's a bit more work, it won't make it a stereo track. And then I won't have to right click and go split into mono, just an extra step. Same thing with the drums. I kind of like all my stems in general to be at zero DB. So I'm just going to double click, make sure that's zero and then double click so that they're all in the center. For guitar tones, since they're mono, they shouldn't be left and right. I prefer them to just be in the center. That way I'm getting the full gain that it should be. And then again here, let's make sure all of my groups are at zero DB. Let's make sure all of the processing is off. This one as well. Any DIs, just completely get rid of the amp. And then for this one, let's name it main amp left. And that's my process with the whole thing. So I'm not going to bore you by going through each individual one. I have the DI tones and I make sure that I have the amp tones for reference. So now that we have everything labeled, let's do the same thing. We'll highlight the whole section and make sure absolutely that it starts at zero in the timeline. Highlight it all, 
export and then in Ableton I have an option to convert as mono which is great so I'm going to do that and then I'll go export and let's name guitars dash and that way when I export it it will just give me guitar dash main di left and it won't be song name band name sample rate guitars dash whatever the waiting game <laughs> If you're doing any like pitch shifting within your guitar amp, it's extremely important, obviously, to make sure that the pitch shifting is on your DI as well. Let's do the same thing. I got three bass tracks here. That means I'll duplicate it three times. So bass, amp, gent bass, amp, bass, DI, and so on. Same thing, make sure it's at zero. All is processing off, no automation, 0 dB, 0 dB, no auxiliaries, highlight your selection, it's already highlighted the amount of time that I need, export, mono, hell yes. Let's go bass. Now on to keys. Keys don't necessarily need to be zeroed out. I do mind when guitars and bass aren't zeroed because if your DI is recorded and it's not clipping and then you send it to me at minus 10 dB, then your DI is way quieter than it should be. When I put an amp tone on, it just sounds much weaker than it should. So I'm not gonna really go through it. I'll go through it. F <laughs> then yeah, make sure whatever you're keeping is labeled. I'm guilty of it, of not necessarily labeling things when I'm writing, because when I'm writing, I'm kind of just friggin' I'm going for it. And these are the 808s. When I'm mixing, I usually put them in my layers as well. Highlight all of these, export, selected tracks only, and uh, they're not mono tracks, they're stereo, so I'll go. And then I either name these layers or keys, but since I'm including like snare reverb sometimes and like 808s, I just find it more accurate to call it layers and then dash. And this is the waiting game. Hate it. Hate it. Ugh. I've been sent stems a lot of times where the keyboards, there'll be like 20 layers of keyboards and I have the audio and the MIDI. As a mix engineer, I absolutely don't need your keyboard MIDI. The only MIDI I need is if you've MIDI'd bass or MIDI drums. Vocals, to be honest, anytime I've been sent stems with raw and with mixed, I just use the raws. Main vocal. Some things that I will keep from the artist is more the effect vocals. So if you say like have a long reverb on a part, like, Earlier I was saying in Pro Tools, sometimes it'll create one stereo track if it's dub left, dub right, whatever. I don't mind in this case because I'll realistically just blend them in one. I don't like with guitars, with vocals, I don't mind. If you're a band with both screaming and singing, it's good to include, say, scream vocal one, scream vocal two, and then like clean vocal one, clean vocal two. No auxiliaries, everything's off. Highlight everything, and again, since it's all mono tracks, I can just go convert to mono, export it as vocals dash, and you can see from the other ones, it just names it automatically. We watch it ride. Look at it. Look at those numbers. Oh, look at all those numbers climb. Oh. One important thing with sending vocals is if you have clean vocals and they're tuned, make sure to send the tuned vocals, but with no other plugins on it. So also when providing all these stems, it's important to supply the mix engineer with your rough mix. That way they hear how you in general hear your things being blended. So the last thing that you can do before sending off the stems, if you wanna be a wonderful human, open up a blank session and import all your stems and make sure that everything is where it should be and that nothing's going on. And then here we are, they're all organized. You got your bass, amp, DI amp di everything's organized i can easily just drag it in and it'll categorize itself perfectly import it into your blank session it's going to ask import tempo yes didn't do anything i don't know why ableton is really ahead of lo a lot of things but it doesn't let you export a tempo map which is absolutely crazy go through and make sure that everything is in the spot that it should be make sure that all of the timing is right and make sure that there's no missing files that way when you send the stems to your engineer you don't have to send a second round. It's kind of annoying when like you get your first round, you're like, cool, I'm ready to mix. And then you're like, oh, like it sounds like there's like five files missing. And then they're like, oh, here's folder number two. And then, oh, here's folder number three. Just one folder does it perfectly. 
So this is my foolproof process with exporting stems, but well exported stems means nothing if the audio isn't recorded properly. So if you wanna learn how to properly record and layer modern metal guitars as well as vocals, check out these two videos that are popping up on your screen right now. And thank you for watching. If you found any use in this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.